Hey guys, this is a message for all star seeds. A couple days ago, I was laying in the grass looking up at the sky and I received a message. It was very short. It just said, you are the ones who come before. You are the ones who come before. And that really resonated with me. I knew it was speaking not just to me specifically, but to my larger soul group and, you know, to star seeds in general. And of course I asked, <laughs> were the ones who come before what? <laughs> what, what? The ones who come before what? And the rest of the message was, you are the ones who come before the announcement. The announcement. <laughs> and I was like, well, that doesn't really, <laughs> that doesn't really give me much more information. What, what, what kind of announcement? And I didn't get any more verbal messages after that, but I could tell that the announcement this word that whoever was communicating with me, I don't know exactly what type of consciousness it was. Um, it was giving me a different way of looking at the idea of ascension. And in this, in this particular viewpoint, not that any viewpoints are any more important than any other it's it was just meant to add in an additional viewpoint that i can consider right so in this viewpoint it's not really about ascending as in going somewhere uh, you know ascension just the word itself the very very specific English word kind of has this connotation of leaving, of going somewhere, um, and of arriving somewhere else. Um, but, oh, sorry, I just, I had my eyes closed as I was talking and I just whacked the whole camera. But this word announcement, it, it's more of humanity realizing, recognizing, and understanding its true nature. Realizing, recognizing, and understanding what it is what humanity really is as a collective, like the human collective consciousness. Coming into a place of unity, but not into a place of sameness and not even necessarily into a place of agreement, but coming into an experience of unity, of diversified unity, diversified unity, because part of this, part of this message is like reminding me of something I repeatedly feel about how humans are we're, we're, we're becoming more diverse, more different, um, and we are increasing our variety of viewpoints, and that's actually what we're supposed to be doing. We're not meant to be become more the same, we're becoming more diverse, but we also can become more unified in our diversity. It, it seems self, it seems contradictory, but um, it's, it's, I don't feel that it is. It's just a little hard to see from our from our human minds sometimes, right? So this idea of the announcement, the announcements, it's to me, it feels like humanity announcing itself as saying like, I am here, I am this, like I am humanity and this is how I am, right? And this is how I am. And I feel like that is, that is what we're growing into. That is what we're growing towards. And Can you feel how in, in this particular viewpoint that we're, you know, that I'm exploring in this video, it, it's like this idea of ascension or the shift in consciousness is happening. Like, it's just this emphasis on it being entirely internal, like entirely internal. It's all about the internal shift in consciousness and about kind of consciousness recognizing itself, understanding itself and saying, hey, I have been this all along. I have been this all along. I... I <laughs> it's like humanity, uh, I feel like the emphasis here is this idea that humanity is already ascended. It's like not even that humanity has ascended in, a f in our future, right? In a future point in space time. It's like, no, we already are. We already are complete. We already are everything that we are. We just haven't noticed it in, in this particular moment, like we haven't noticed it. So it's all about this emphasis on noticing and then announcing. And it feels like an announcement, <laughs> like an announcement to the universe, an announcement to the universe, almost as if the universe, it, the universe isn't particularly waiting for us to, to ascend or evolve or change even. It's like the universe is waiting for us to remember and recognize and understand what we already are. 
And coming back to the idea of, you know, you are the ones who come before, you are the ones who come before the announcement. Um, and how this applies to star seeds in particular. Um, of course, I mean, this could be, as you can hear the way I'm talking, right? I, I'm more talking about the human collective in general. So, I mean, this is a, this is a message for all humans, but I, I just feel at least at this moment, <laughs> most of the people who resonate with are going to be star seeds, right? Because we're the ones who kind of are prone to thinking about this stuff. We are the ones who come before. To me, that was a really deep, deep message of hope. A message of hope. Really meant to emphasize uh, it, like how, how much, how we are pioneers, how we are explorers, how we are just at the very, very beginning of the game. I, I know we often feel, you know, like we are so old, like our souls have been through such a long, arduous journey and that we've been here for so long and we've been, and it's like, it's all, sometimes we feel like it's almost over, but really with this message, it's like, it, this is just the beginning. And this is actually even before the beginning. It's like, if we were to use the metaphor of a human body, right? It's like, we're still in the womb. We're still in the womb. We haven't even been born yet. And then there's going to be the whole life ahead of humanity. And like, humanity hasn't even come out of the womb yet. <laughs> um, that's how early it is in the game. And so this message, to me, it, it was meant to emphasize, like, you know, it, it, if, if, if you have ever felt tired, if your soul has ever felt tired, if your soul has ever felt exhausted, felt like this has been going on for too long, felt, maybe even you felt like this is going to be my last lifetime on earth, why would I ever want to come back here, that kind of thing. Um, the emphasis here is that it has felt like that, it has felt like that because you are a pioneer like on a cosmic level, a cosmic pioneer, a pioneer in consciousness, a forerunner of consciousness, doing things that no one has ever done before. And there's this emphasis I feel about, sometimes we look to the higher realms, we look to higher evolve, like consciousness that we perceive as being higher in dimension or higher in frequency or more evolved and feeling like they have the answers and although they have so much wisdom and guidance to give us, and of course I'm, I don't see myself ever looking, ever, ever stopping looking at, looking to higher realms for guidance, uh, there's this emphasis here that they don't really know better than we do, right? They, they have a broader perspective that they can share with us and that can help us in our learning and understanding and our growing. But really we are the ones, we are the experts here. We are the ones figuring this out. We are the ones learning it. And there's this emphasis on look, look to yourself, <laughs> look to yourself, look to your own wisdom, look to your own understanding and know that there are no, like sometimes, sometimes it's easy to think that there is an answer out there, a specific answer out there that we are trying to find and that it's just hidden and we just haven't discovered it yet. But really it's, you are creating the answer. You are creating and discovering and finding the solution. There is nothing outside of yourself to find. There is no objective truth for you to discover. There is no um, rule that you need to follow. There, it, It's about creation and discovery. It's not about finding what is already there. It's about creation and discovery because you are a pioneer. You are going where no consciousness has ever gone before in this universe. And you are the ones who came before. Hmm. Well, I just felt a big shift in energy. <laughs> big shift in energy. I don't even remember seeing anything for how long has it been? The nine minutes I've been talking, um, I don't remember seeing anything. Like with my physical eyes, I either had my eyes closed or I wasn't seeing what I was doing. So um, here I feel like I'm back. Um, these little piggies, my sister crocheted these for me when I got married. We have the little bride, the little bride piggy, <laughs> and the little groom piggy. And I don't know why these guys wanted to come out for the reading. They sit on my bookcase, like right over here. And I honestly don't think of them that often because I've had them for years, but they wanted to hang out. So I guess that there is a I can feel them vibrating. They have a frequency here about 
divine union, right? And they're, they're here holding that. Not entirely sure how that comes into play yet, but there we go. Little piggies. Reclaim your energy. I am filming this on the new moon in Aries 2022. <laughs> this is perfect. Reclaim your energy. This is something I have been working through personally because I often feel like I don't have enough energy to go around. I've always felt that other people have more energy than I do and that I get like tired easily and that I, I can't put that many hours of working in a day. Like if I have it my way, I would work for maybe four hours tops <laughs> and then just spend the rest of the day kind of relaxing. I spend a lot of the time feeling like I need to pace myself and curate my energy. And I mean, I'm physically healthy. There's no physical reason for that to be. I just, this is just something I've kind of felt my entire life that other people have this ability to just generate energy. And I've, I've often felt like I somehow lack that. And I'm not entirely sure. I mean, I have a few little ideas, but I'm not entirely sure exactly what it is. And this is going to be different for everybody, right? So some people, this is reclaiming your energy from like energy vampires, right? And, but sometimes the energy vampire is like a thought that you hold, a belief that you hold. Like you can be your own energy vampire with like thought programs running in your head, right? Belief systems running in your head. Um, even the, the, um, even allowing things like worry, like allowing, allowing yourself to worry about things can suck your energy. And that could be like an energy vampire. Um, for others of you, you're kind of in the, um, kind of like what I described, right? Just feeling like you never really have enough energy and kind of looking around going, why do other people have more energy? Um, and this, it, so it doesn't really matter uh, where your energy has been going or why it has been not at a higher capacity. You don't even need to figure it out. This is just reclaim your energy, reclaim your energy. To me, this feels like really tune into your solar plexus is how, where I feel it anyway. If it's somewhere else for you, tune into wherever and see if you can actually... Wow, this is like a piece of advice I'm getting getting like for the first time right now. Um, it seems really obvious now that I'm saying it, but I have not actually practiced this myself. See if you can practice like tuning into your lower chakras and breathing in there and see if you can actually like cultivate energy, like cultivate it. Can I'm sure if you've ever done any martial arts or done things like Tai Chi or um, what is that? There's a practice what involving like uh there's a there's a tradition where it, they don't really focus on chakras they focus on focus on the three dantians the three dantians and the lower dantian which is like your lower chakras is the kind of wellspring of all of your energy i don't really know much about it but it's coming to mind some of you will know what i'm talking about um there's all of these different practices mostly uh practices coming out of asia where you practice like cultivating energy inside of your body with your consciousness in, in different kinds of ways, right? So interesting. Um, <laughs> I feel like this is something I should have been doing and I thought of, should have thought of before, but there we go. Um, tossing that out there, find a way that works for you, you know, experiment, do what works or just make it up on your own. There, there, to a large extent, you should be able to influence the amount of energy that you have access to right this is like freeing yourself like i'm seeing the eight of swords right i'm <laughs> seeing the eight of swords freeing yourself from limiting beliefs around how much energy you have and this isn't this this is this is really going to ask for your your honesty with yourself and your discernment because this doesn't mean like push yourself when you're tired or like try to do things when you don't have energy this is actually try to cultivate the energy first and i also feel like before you really do anything, make sure you actually have the energy to do it. Cultivate the energy from within. See if you can do that. And it, this, this is like a long-term process, I feel. And I'm really interested that this is coming out. How is this even related to the earlier message about you are the ones who come before? Reclaim your energy. Interesting. Okay, so there's a bigger picture to this. Um, the What they're showing me is like... When you came to Earth, you were this <laughs> higher density, bright ball of energy and light, right? And you brought your, your light down into the Earth plane and you s literally like spread your light around. You spread your light around and it kind of got siphoned off. And it, it, it was like, because you, you came here to give your light away and it kind of got taken away. Um, almost like, <laughs> they're showing me like the star seeds when we came in. We were like these light infusions. We came and we we lost a large amount of our light because it went, 
it went out into the into like the earth's energetic field like we we literally came in brought bringing the light and then our light left us like our energy left us and then we were left more um that that was necessary first of all because we couldn't exist in the 3d matrix with with that much energy right we, we weren't a match so we had to lose a lot of our light um but also we we brought the light down so that it could go into the like into the earth grid so that it could go into the biomorphic field of the earth it could go into the you know all of it the whole energetic system of the earth the whole biosphere our light went into the system so <laughs> this that's really significant if you think that um like your primordial light <laughs> the light that you brought with you when you came to earth is everywhere it is everywhere it is superimposed on top of you right now it is flying around the earth it is part of the entire earth's ecosystem it's like we, we brought the light here and the earth the light went out and now it is part of gaia it is part of the entire biosphere of earth um and now there's something it's like we can tune back into that and that doesn't mean that we're not going to be like like taking the light back it's not like it's going to be leaving the earth system right it's not like we're stealing it back or anything like that because uh, but it's that we can tune back into it we can tune back into it i'm actually feeling like um for some of you this might resonate like if you can actually energetically tap into it could be it could feel like the ley lines that are around where you live you can actually tap into the ley lines and receive energy from that um but it doesn't even need to be ley lines it's like be aware of the ambient energy field that is like around you physically like right now that is just everywhere right the vibrations and the radiation that is everywhere around you you can't see it right but it's there um it's just like you know that radio signals right the vibrations the wavelengths of radio signals are bouncing around in the air all the time all the time right same thing with the light that you brought with you it it is flying around right around you just like a radio radio wave right now and you can tune back into it and this is interesting because it's like your frequency is getting high enough where you can like utilize that energy utilize that energy and let it let it charge you up and you can utilize it without taking it out of the system very interesting Th these are very interesting messages and this is actually why i wanted to do this reading because when i come to do a collective reading you guys bring so much energy and all your consciousness to the vortex of the reading and then I get messages that I would never have received otherwise so like you're these are literally messages that you brought to me so that I can receive them <laughs> and then I can verbalize them it's so cool because uh, it's like you know by myself I just received the one message about you are the ones who came before the announcement and then I sit down to do this and then all this other whole stuff comes out it's incredible <laughs> alignment Oh, this, <laughs> this is, is like the Dantians, the three Dantians, the lower Dantian, the middle Dantian, and the higher Dantian. I don't really remember much about that system of viewing our energy. I read about it like for one day several years ago, <laughs> um, but I'm going to have to looking that up again because this is coming up. What this feels like in my body right now is if you imagine your lower chakras is like one sphere of energy Your heart chakra is another sphere of energy And if you just think even like the physical human heart has a really big magnetic field. This is something that actually kind of perplexes Like physicians scientists wondering why the physical heart has so much electromagnetic activity, right? So it's like the heart is its own energy center the heart is its own energy center and then your higher chakras are another energy center But you can see they're more like expansive and diffuse if you want concentrated energy It comes down into the lower chakras and your heart chakra interestingly so um To me, this feels like a conclusion. Like one of the things involved in this is a conclusion of the clearing of your lower chakras. So, you know, for some of you, it's going to be mostly root chakra. For some of you, maybe it was sacral or solar plexus. It could be all three. Um, you've probably gone through bits and pieces of doing both, right? But one of them is going to hit home as being more of a focus for you recently. And I feel like that um, clearing process is really, really concluding like around the time you receive this video. It's really, really concluding. So there could be like one or two more things come up and it's just really important to notice it's like you know if you've got root chakra issues surrounding 
um, like scarcity mentality of financial abundance, right? Um, it's like if you have one more moment of worrying about how to pay the bills, just know that you're not backsliding. It's actually just the final, the final clean out, the final clearing. What I'm seeing is like a, um, like a big white, like a white bucket. Imagine a white bucket that used to be full of mud and it's been cleaned out, but there's just like some sand left at the bottom of the bucket and it's just being wiped out right now. So your lower chakra healing is like so close to being, I don't know if it's ever completely done while we are in our human bodies, but this is like, <laughs> it is so close to being, to having a massive lower chakra healing cycle closing out. And then you're going to be onto an entirely new like vibrational sphere of your chakras vibrational sphere of your chakras after this you're going to be getting like a chakra upgrade and i mean you've already been getting chakra upgrades this is not the first time you've done this but it's going to be like they're going to be so clear and pure that you're going to be moving into like a higher dimension of your chakras if that makes sense it it's just it feels like your chakras are going to have more energy flowing through them and you're going to be able to access their higher capacities it's like they're going <laughs> um like an like a car engine that can get more revs that can like that can rev higher your chakras are going to be able to rev higher and that's going to be a big part of reclaiming your energy because your your chakras are going to be able to like tune into the ambient energy around you right all all of the different sources of energy that you have available to you your chakras are going to be able to like absorb that more tune into that more and like convert it into energy for your body and your consciousness more efficiently it's like you're becoming a more your, your lower chakras specifically are becoming a more efficient engine it's like you don't need to put you know so much gas into the car it's like imagine if your car could run a hundred times longer on the same tank of gas it's like your engine is becoming so much more efficient and there's just this final clearing of this cycle of chakra healing <laughs> venus love i want more on this what specifically um it what it, what it what is occurring to me with this is that venus for some really shows up as a love planet obviously but for some it shows up more as a money planet so i mean it could be both for you but whatever your issue is right whatever your issue is if love is your thing that you feel that you lack if you have struggled with like abandonment issues or worrying that you're going to be alone forever then this is the healing coming through for you on that but if it's on an abundance thing a financial security thing then it's coming through on that let's get some more about this it's like you deserve to feel secure you deserve to feel secure is the message i get with this interesting yeah i'm getting shivers you deserve to feel secure TikTok. Not for you. And breathe. Okay. <laughs> First of all, this is again with that final, well, I mean, final for right now, right? Final for right now. Final of this cycle could be more cycles in the future. But for right now, what you need to know is that something has really run its course. Something has really, really run its course. And um, so for some, it's like for some, this is going to be like really a relationship <laughs> could have run its course. That That's like the very like easy example here. For some of you, a relationship has run its course and it's time for it to leave. Like that relationship was not for you, right? Or I could use the metaphor of a job, right? That job was not for you. That's why you lost your job. It's time for it to go. It was, it was not for you. It has run its course. It's like time is up. But it, it, this, is, um, this is not because that person or that relationship was bad for you. It's just that it's not for you now because this is like the person or the job or whatever has is shifting out for you. It's just a reflection of the energy, right? That energy is no longer for you. The vibration is no longer for you because you you were in a kind of, um you were in a lower frequency state, right? You were in a lower frequency state that you had more worries, you had more insecurities, you had more baggage, and therefore your life situation aligned with worries and baggage and insecurities and issues, right? But that is shifting out. It's like, it's done, it's done, it's done, right? 
it, it, it's time for that to go. So, so for some, I mean, for some of you, this could be like, yes, yes, yes. I'm so glad that that's done. I'm ready to move on and move up. For some of you, there could be more of a um, mourning experience, having to say goodbye to things, having to really have that physical experience of things shifting out. And that could be, you know, so for some, for some, this could be easier than it is for others, but it's so going to be worth it because then you're going to be in this state. Look at this beautiful being sitting on the lily pad. <sighs> Breathe, right? Breathe. This is getting so tuned into your body. Um, but like using your body as a, like, how do I describe this impression? You feel Like having this physical sensation that your body is an instrument of the universe. Like, using your body not just to connect to the earth right i know we, we use our we obviously use our bodies to connect to gaia connect to the earth but this is like you can feel the way the stars vibrate your body whatever that even means feel the way the stars vibrate your body honestly to me uh, man these these messages are kind of they're surprising me this is they're surprising me is what's happening so um you know, some people are really, really, really sensitive to the movement of the planets. Some people aren't, and that doesn't, if you're not sensitive to the astrological transits, that doesn't mean you're not sensitive, okay? I just want to be very clear on that. Some people feel like, you know, people are always talking about, you know, the, the moons and the transits, and like, I just don't feel it, and like, that's fine, okay? You don't need to be sensitive to the movements of the planets. If anything, if you're not sensitive to the movements of the planets, then you're just freed from that, and you actually have, like, kind of a, like a degree of more energetic independence, right? Um, but I really feel like there's this... Uh, a group of people and I don't really know if I'm one of them because I, I don't I don't know I don't know maybe I am and I just haven't realized yet but there's going to be a group of people who are going to be like learning about the astrology of the stars right so we, we, we it's easy to kind of pay attention to the astrology of the planets moving around but it's like there is this that's just the tip of the iceberg, right? If you imagine all of the stars that we can see, even if we just stop, even if we just stop at all the stars we can see in our sky, right? Every single one of those stars um, is connected to your energy. You are connected to every single star out there. And as you know, the planet turns, and as we rotate around the sun, and as our sun goes through its orbit around its central sun, which I think is supposed to be Alcyone, is that how you say it? Anyway, um, there's, there's like this astrology of the stars, this astrology of the stars, and some of you are going to be tuning into that. Um, and that's going to be a rather confusing journey where you'll have to like entirely trust just your impressions on this because it's like you're not going to, I don't know of any books that are going to teach you about like galactic astrology, right? The astrology of the stars and learning how the stars influence your energy but uh some uh, a, like a clue a place to start would be if you look at your birth chart but not really looking at the planets if you pull up like you can go to astro astro.com and pull up like the, you could start with the fixed stars for example you could see um so the fixed stars it's like you know they're like everyone has them at the same place it's like so, um i think sirius is a fixed star don't quote me on that. I don't remember. But the fixed stars, they're at a specific point. You know, it'll be like 22 degrees Aquarius, for just to give you an example, right? And, and that, that everyone has it at the same spot. It's always there. Um, but of course, you have it in your own individual house placement, right? You have it in your own house placement. So, and you, it, it can be aspecting your own planet. So my, the point of talking about this is, this is a, this is a very specific message mainly, mainly maybe just for a few of you but if you look at your birth chart and you pull up some of the stars and you feel like you resonate more with the stars as if the placement of the stars in your birth chart if do they give you more information do they do, does the, does their placement does it speak more to you than you know what mars and venus are doing that's how you'll know that that is something for you to investigate like start looking at your birth chart of how what the stars are doing in your birth chart how they how they play out that way how are you connected to the stars that that's going to be like a really key place to start, right? Um, so anyway, that that's not going to be for everybody. That's just going to be for somebody watching this anyway. <laughs> Back to breathe, right? Back to breathe. This, this stuff that it's time has run out and it's not for you. That's shifting out to give you room to breathe, to give you room to breathe, to feel like this, to feel like this. <sighs> You know, it 
feels like like the race is over. The race is over. Now you can catch your breath. So you are the ones who came before. And I feel like it is time, whenever you receive this video, it is time to kind of let go of the struggle because we can feel like we're struggling as long as we hold on to the frequency of struggle, right? We can feel like we, we can struggle for as long as we want, but if you can actually just let go of the struggle, then you will no longer be struggling, right? And that, you know, your human mind might have thoughts on that, but your soul understands this. Your soul understands this. So allow your soul to lead the way and allow your soul to just trust and allow the struggle to drop out of your vibration, right? Allow the struggle to drop out of your vibration and everything can be flowing and peaceful and easy after this. It doesn't mean that you won't have challenges, but it means that you can ride the waves with grace and that you can navigate the challenges without feeling like you're always in the struggle, right? Um, and this is important. This is part of announcing that you have arrived. That is how, that, that is one of the ways in which you can announce that you have arrived, right? You are one of the ones who came before. And in order to like get to the finish line, in order to be at the finish line, in, in, in order to say, I am ready to announce myself, it's like drop out of the struggle and just say, I'm already here. I'm already here. There's nothing else I need to do to get to the finish line. There's nothing else I need to do. There's nothing I left undone. There's nothing else I need to prove. There's nothing more I need to earn. I've done it. I am here and I announce my presence. <laughs> I announce that I have made it and I announce that I know myself, that I see myself and that I understand myself in relation to the universe. Time for healing as we already know, confirming what we already know. This is like, I'm getting really big shivers on this. There, there, there's more to this message. It's, um, it's like healing the entire human sphere, whatever that means. Um, this is like big, big, big collective healing, big, big, big collective healing. I think on one level, this is letting you know that the healing that you were doing personally is like massively healing for the collective. Because you have actually taken on more wounds than some others. And sometimes even though you took on those wounds and that trauma deliberately and consensually, there can be a feeling of resentment nonetheless, right? feeling like it wasn't fair. I shouldn't have had to carry that load. I shouldn't have had to carry that burden. I shouldn't have had to try for so hard. I shouldn't have had to struggle for so long. I shouldn't have had to take on that much trauma. And that's actually a really, like it's a, that that is an okay place to be. There's nothing wrong with that. Don't judge yourself for those feelings of like resentment or those feelings of injustice um, because that is actually an indication of that you're really ready to like finish off this healing cycle, finish off this healing cycle. Because if you're to the place where you're kind of a little bit resentful about the path you've had to walk <laughs> and about the burdens you had to carry and about the traumas you had to heal from, that like if you're kind of like, yeah, you know, I get, I get it. Like I know that I did this to myself and I know that this was all deliberate and I know that it was for a good purpose and I know it's going to be worth it. But right now I still just feel kind of a little bit butthurt about it, right? <laughs> that kind of feeling. That's really okay because that is letting you, like that is such a sign of, of like you're finishing off that final cycle. So now it, it's like you're working through that process of healing from that little bit of bitterness and healing from that little bit of resentment. And I don't feel that this is like a large amount of bitterness and resentment for maybe for some of you, if you've had very, very specific things happen to you in this life, right? Um, but I think for most of us, it, it's just 
it's just something in the background and it's probably something we don't really allow ourselves to think about that often but you might find um, around the time you watch this video it could have been last week it could be next week you could find that something small in your life happens and suddenly you just feel like I shouldn't have had to do it. I shouldn't have had to go through that. Like it wasn't fair, right? That kind of feeling. Um, and that's okay. You're just, pur you're purging this whole process, right? So allow yourself to express that, do whatever you need to do to feel through it and release it, right? Because then you're going to feel better afterwards and you're going to be able to let, like move on from even that place. You're going to be able to move on from the resentment and the, those feelings of injustice because you're going to, that's the closing of the cycle. It's like this closing of the door. It's like really... It's like you're receiving closure. You're receiving closure on the path that you've walked. <laughs> A new romantic cycle begins. New moon in Libra. <laughs> there we go. So, so many levels to this, right? Those of you looking for romance, there you go. A new romantic cycle begins. This is not just a new partner. This is like a new type of partner. So for anybody who has been in like a series of toxic relationships or just running into the same, um, maybe even just in your one relationship, if you've been running into the same problem, the same argument, like having the same argument with your spouse or something, right? This is like, that's shifting out. So even those of you staying in the same relationship, right? This is a refreshment of your relationship. This is getting into a new cycle of the relationship, right? And this is also like a new cycle of abundance and money because this is this is Venus energy, right? Libra, Venus energy. Um, also with this new moon in Libra, this, this justice energy. So also justice, right? We were just talking about those feelings of injustice. The feelings of injustice are you're healing from that. You're, you're closing that cycle and a new cycle is beginning and the scales are balanced. The scales are balanced. You might actually come to an understanding where you realize that it, it, it's a feeling of going, oh, maybe we are actually even. Maybe we are actually even. Maybe you'll have that experience with someone. You'll be able to look at them and go, okay, we're even now. Or maybe you're just going to say, okay, let's just call it even. You know, it's like, it's okay, it's okay we're even. We're even. It's fine. I'm just going to call it even. Maybe for some of you, maybe it truly is even. And maybe some of you are going to say, it's okay, whatever. The bigger picture, it's even. So your experience of that can be different. But you're going to have this feeling of calling it even. And the, the, bigger, uh, the bigger picture of this is... The, on the universal level, realizing that you and the universe are partners, okay? You and the universe are partners. It's like you are one half of the scale. The entire, your, you and your inner universe are over here and the external universe is over there and you are equals. You are equals with the universe. You are in partnership with the universe. Some of you, this can feel like you and your higher self, right? Seeing eye to eye, being complete partners, knowing that your higher self or the universe or source itself is not this parent figure, is not this higher figure, right? It, it, it's that you are equals. This is like a, a sense of empowerment so strong where you, where you really realize who and what you are in the universe. And you realize that everything is about your relationship with your inner space and your outer space, your inner space and your outer space. And you can be having interest. This is going to be very personal and different for everybody, but interesting and new experiences of like how you relate to the universe in a new way, feeling the balance between yourself and the universe and feeling like you. Okay. So romantic relationships, I think are so, like, they're so important to us because they teach us about how we can relate to the universe. If you, if you can imagine the most healthy, balanced relationship that you can between now I know why these guys why these guys are out here right <laughs> my two little piggies bride and groom right if you can imagine these two guys being in the most healthy balanced relationship that you can possibly conceive of right it transcends this idea of two individuals that simply relating to each other and the relationship itself becomes a force of creation the relationship itself expands their reality. They become so much more. They, they become more than the sum of their parts, right? They, they create an entire reality together that is exponentially more. It's like massively expansive. It's like one plus one, you put them together, um, like a dysfunctional relationship, right? If you put one and one together, then you just kind of get two. One plus one equals two, right? But if you put one and one together and they harmonize in this way, in this very, like, yin and yang way or what? what is that there's a phrase like the hieros gamos union for those of you who know of that phrase <laughs> it, it's like that it, the 
the alchemical union of divine feminine and divine masculine energies, right? Um, and also like the, um, the twin flame union of the inner and the outer, right? The inner and the outer, the, the understanding, um, you know, the idea that you are your own twin flame, right? Your inner, your inner reality and your outer reality being essentially manifesting as these twin flame dynamic, this twin flame relationship, many, there's a few, there's many different ways of kind of looking at this. They all kind of get at the same thing. It's this balance between you and the other, you and the other, and you are your inner space. And the other is the entire fucking universe, but you are balanced and you are equal. You used to feel small because you used to feel like one small soul out in a vast universe, right? In a vast cosmos, like knowing, you know, multiverse, omniverse, but there's a shift in perspective here. A new romantic cycle begins. You and your inner space, your inner reality, and the entire rest of the universe, right? Self and other, inner and outer, in perfect balance. And from there, that's where your potential, your universe, your capacity to create, your experience of life, your experience of consciousness, your multidimensionality, it's like everything just blows out of the water because you're now in balance with the universe and you have announced to the universe that you are an equal to it. You are an equal to it and that you love it, that you are in divine union with it, that you are in partnership with it and that your entire, the, the entire process of creation comes from a place of love, right? Comes from a place of love, just like that's it. it like the balance of love and the expansion of love just becomes the creative force that exponentially expands your reality and everything in it. And that is about the best I can do at explaining this. So I'm going to leave you guys there. Sending you so much love and light. Bye.